Hey, it actually looks like there's some people here. Or is that just you? Uh, we know there are people. Carly, in the chat. hello. People in the ch chat room. There are some um, people here. Yeah. So if you are here in Zoom with us, yes. I'm reminding you that it, there's a button at the bottom that when you click it and it says everyone, it means that when you type in the chat, you're type chatting with everyone. Yes. Everyone. If it's that to all panelists, it only comes to us. Good thing to know. I see. Cora Lee, Mary Silva, and Sy uh, Sylvia. Sylvia, I haven't seen you in a while. Hello, how are you? Mary Silva, good to see you. Cora Lee, good to see you again. I see, uh, I see a hand raise from somebody. Uh, okay, let's see. Doodly doo doo. How's are we doing on uh, on the Facebook side of things? Uh, for those of you who are just arriving, welcome. My name is Nicholas Rave. This is my partner in crime, Adrian Gunn, and hi, hi. we. <clears throat> are here with How to NLP Standing Up. This may be our last show for a while, uh, but we're kind of coming full circle and uh, getting to a place where we wanted to get all the way back when we started this. What was it, six weeks ago? I think so. Gosh, yeah. It feels forever ago. I know. It's been a fun journey and a good experiment, and uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about what we're planning to do with everything that we learned here uh, after we're done. But welcome for those of you who are here. Anybody watching for the first time on Facebook, hello. We are going to be doing a live demonstration uh, utilizing hypnosis and NLP to help uh, someone I've never met, uh, hopefully, let go of a pattern related to, what is it, anxiety and panic attacks? I believe that is the case, yes. All right. So uh, I have no idea how this is gonna go. Uh, never done this before, but I'm kind of excited to see. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so who else is in our chat? Have they said hello? We've got Corley, it said we've got Mary, Corley. There's six people oh, theoretically here. Somebody named Nun. Ooh. Hello, Nun. Not like N U N N O N E. Oh. Yeah, like they don't exist. That or they is don't better. have a name. What is your name? Nun. That's better than Nunya. Although I'm, there was someone I knew, uh, probably in Vegas, whose name was Nunya. Which, Nunya. Yeah, we just for um, reals though, for reals, or were if they? If anything was her business, it was Nunya business. That's what, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have fun, and then sometimes uh. pet ourselves. Yay! Alrighty, <laughs> so I'm excited. So when we set out. I don't think we actually set out to do this, how to NLP standing up. I don't think that was our intention. I think you and I. Well, hold on. Do you want to like, do you want to like open this thing? Cause like technically it's six o'clock now. So if anybody was waiting to start, like this is our official start time. Oh, cause we started early. Yeah. That was a good thing though. I mean, now we're all set and it's actually 601. So instead of 605, like when we normally get started. I see what you're saying and that we did there. Yeah, well, you know, it took us six times, but <laughs> we got there. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you keep learning, you never fail. <laughs> six times and then we got there. That's That was good, that's what she said moment, but that's cool. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> hey, six times, come on. Like It took us six times. Somebody's but working there. really hard there. If it takes you six times, but you get there, don't you give up. Don't you ever give up. <laughs> all of the fingers. We used uh, all of by the, the fingers. way, we're international right now because uh, Sylvia just said, bonjour, Nicholas from Quebec. <gasps> we win. Ah. This is how we get over the border <laughs> safely. Yeah. Either direction. Good for us. Exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, so what? how do we go in? Okay, uh, you want to start and just say yeah. hello to people? Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to NLP Standing Up. I'm Adrienne Gunn. With I'm Nicholas Rave. That guy. And we're excited to have you. When we decided to do this experiment of, of NLPing in a show, I don't, I don't think it was actually a decision that we, we thought we'd made. I think uh, we were talking about the way in which people go to trainings, seminars for hypnosis and NLP, and they have this amazing experience and they learn a lot of tools and then have challenges bringing it into their real life. And yeah. I thought, hey, there are 
probably ways we could make this a lot easier for people to get just how magical and amazing these tools are and then how to begin to use them in their lives and integrate them into their lives, which is, we had a sweet conversation about that and then it accidentally looked like a show. And I think we thought, Maybe we should do that. Yeah. What if we just did that, but with like the, with like other people watching word. Mm -hmm. Yes. A lot of our really great ideas are like that. Oh, we already did a thing. Maybe we should keep doing that on purpose. I don't know. So we've done, so when we thought, okay, we'll put it out in front of people. We wanted to talk about how do you, what, what is the experience like when you're a new person? So earlier, I think episode two, three, two, three. Either two or three, we had a guest on who just recently had her certification. Oh, right. I think Kimberly. that was. Yeah. So it was like, like two or three. We had Kimberly yeah. on chatting about how excited she was to new, learn these new tools. I know that we talked quite a bit about some of the presuppositions or yeah. if you're a normal person, the fundamental beliefs that are useful for life and for these tools. And so yeah. that's, that's been where most of our conversations have been. Yeah. What else have we accomplished in these episodes? Uh, well, you know, I, I think one of the main things I'd point out is like this, this is a pretty niche topic. Like we're talking about stuff here where, you know, this is not an intro to NLP class. This is kind of assuming that you sort of know what is going on. You have some exposure to hypnosis and NLP. Tonight, tonight's talk, though, I wonder if we're going to end up with some people who who don't know anything about it. And they're just like live demonstration of hypnosis, NLP. Like, sure. yeah, maybe, maybe we're going to get some people who are showing up here that just kind of want to see in curiosity's sake. So I, I'd like to say that for tonight, I'm not really going to be teaching or explaining a lot of what I'm doing. The, the focus is mostly going to be on demonstrating like in a live context for real, like what this stuff looks like. That does remind me that some of our earlier moments, or earlier episodes were about, hey, what the heck is NLP? Yeah, how do you and explain it to people? It, how do you explain it? So maybe we take a moment, go back in time, and we talk about how NLP, when I came to learn about it, was uh, initially the concept that your language doesn't explain your reality, it creates it. And mm. you can utilize your own language, which includes your your filters in your mind and includes your physical body and your tonality and the words you choose you can influence your own internal life and sh and you can shift your life utilizing language and you can shift and influence other people's lives as well which was i was supremely drawn to that back when i was 19 and heard this concept uh, initially i've now come to understand after becoming a master practitioner that there are so many uh, strategies and tools that are available that are under the umbrella of what we call neuro-linguistic programming, yeah. which is also technically hypnosis or a cheat sheet towards hypnosis, Yeah, that um, there's so much more that we can do with it. And it's just easier to explain to people that our language changes our neurology. Mm. And that's what this is a practice of, utilizing yeah. tools to change Yeah, we think... Being. We think in words, we think in words and concepts. And therefore, if you change your language, you change your thoughts and your thoughts and your beliefs are a lot less reflections of reality and a lot more blueprints for reality. And it affects yourself. It affects other people too which is sort of the basis of what we're going to be demonstrating tonight is when you really understand language, you really understand how the mind works, how quickly can you make changes, especially when they're really significant? Absolutely. One of the other things that you and I were chatting about uh, alone about an hour ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who specializes in, she's a naturopathic doctor for children with cancer, which mm. is um, a hot topic at parties. Like oh, yeah. She's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's hit exactly. when she goes to the barbecue. Everybody's like, Oh my god, tell me more about that. Uh, you, no, you. But <laughs> she was talking about how she is so delighted to be at this like pinnacle moment in people's lives where these are the times that perspective shifts where priorities become realigned. And oh, what yeah. I was talking to her about is that's kind of the big question with NLP and hypnosis is 
how can you create uh, an instance where in someone's life can shift instantly mm. without them having to have a family member die or have mm. some sort of disease themselves or get in a car accident or those sorts of things? Yeah, we've all heard those stories about people who have an experience like that and then, you know, wake up to what's really important. And for many of us, we have to wait until one of those things happens. And that, that's really where these tools become really fascinating to me. When you move from my life sucks, how do I make it not suck? To my life is good, how can I make it fucking epic? Absolutely. And then there's the other part of that paradigm wherein there are things like PTSD, which some people call like a phobia on steroids. If, mm. if, an, if an instance or a trauma can happen, that shifts you into a phobic response instantly. And that, that, that situation could have taken moments and your brain has changed. Can we also create a situation where we can reverse it, where we can make an impact that big? Yeah, like if, if somebody's got a phobia of the water, um, one of the things I find fascinating about that is people never forget. They never like walk up next to a pool and have a conversation with you and then go, oh shit, I forgot. I'm really scared of the water. Like it never happens that way. But for some reason, most people think, well, obviously you can have one bad experience that can create a response that visceral and that deeply programmed in. But there's no way you could do the same thing with something positive, like, like feeling absolutely unshakable confidence or uh, ecstatic pleasure. Why, what, what, what is it about our, our, our programming that tells us that we can only do that in a negative direction? Absolutely. So when we were talking about how amazing these tools are, and you and I both have experiences of helping people shift their lives massively, you thought it would be exciting to share that and have like actually do this live to just show people the kinds of things that we do. So I reached out. I have a friend that I believe we went to high school together. I, I don't know if we were crazy close then, maybe we sang together, but I've, I've come to really enjoy the kind of Facebook, Facebook eavesdropping that you can uh, on my fin, friend, Mary Silva, who's here now. She's a gorgeous photographer and gorgeous person. She also just recently, I have a lot of entrepreneur friends. She's doing businessing, which is what I call it, businessing. Uh, and I, I'm sure, Mary, if you'd like to, you could talk more about this, but let's find a way to now uh can we okay her? mary what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna promote you to a panelist you're getting a promotion and what that's gonna mean is that i think you have to agree to something and then you'll you'll disappear and then you'll come back into the room as a panelist and then your video should be available and we should be able to see at that point so i'm gonna click the button now so Bye. mary has as her as her business adventures have have been going on she's been sharing some of her stories about business and some of her stories about her challenges with anxiety. And I thought it could be cool to bring her on. We'll see if the camera will pull up so that. Oh, I see it. Hi, there's your hey, face. Hi there. <laughs> I'm excited. I am so excited too. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, are you in a sauna? I Look know. I was just going to ask the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm oh, in my hi. Hi, puppy. Oh, my dog's puppy. here too. So um, I might be petting her a bit. So she won't uh, whine. Sure. She'll whine at her. So sorry. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mary. This is Nicholas. Nicholas, this is Mary. Hi, nice to meet you, Mary. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so hey, nice yeah. To meet you. <laughs> the, the puppies. What's the puppy's name? Daisy. Oh, Daisy. So pretty. Look at <laughs> your face. <laughs> okay, Mary. Ah. Uh, Maybe drop us into your life. Cause I, I said things about like you, you're a businessing person now and you've got these adventures. Let's start with, go ahead and, and tell us a little about yourself. Okay. Do you want to know about like my, the anxiety part of my life or let's, like, let's save just, that. Yeah, we're going to save. Okay. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, but so just, this is your opportunity. We've got people, uh, I have a lot of followers and friends that are entrepreneurs and might be excited about your journey there. You, you've got an opportunity to let us know who the heck you are. It's sort of free, free publicity in that sense. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, so I started selling on eBay, um, 
about a year ago. I think it was a year ago. Um, and business has really picked up um, over the year. Um, I know it's going to keep picking up. Um, let's see. I sell used clothing. Um, and I go shop at the Goodwill outlet by... Um, I go there once a week and usually pick up like 80 to 90 pounds of clothes and pay like a buck a pound for it and then bring it home, you know, take photos, uh, sell stuff and then ship it out. And that's my life right now. Oh and, my um, God. That's so cool. I'm serious. So like fun. my, like, it, my sister fun. taught me how to do goodwill, like for real, like she's a costume designer and she like oh. knows how to like go in and like, I, I seriously want to pick your brain about how you do that. Like not right now, we'll save it. But that is so cool. Like what a great entrepreneurial idea. Yeah, yeah. I actually I found it. a girl on YouTube um, that did it. And she basically taught me from YouTube how to do it. And then um, my, my goal is in about two years. Um, hopefully I'll have enough cash saved to buy a manufactured home and put it in the back part of where I'm staying um, on the property. So that's my goal. And then I won't have, nobody can take my home from me. I'll own it. And yeah. And then, awesome. oh, and, and um, in about a month or two, I'm getting a couple cows. <gasps> what? So I'm super excited about that. I'm going to have cows. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I'm that's really awesome. girl now. That feels like a very Northwest thing to me. Like I, I'm from Washington state originally. I'm down in Southern California now, but like that feels very much like, like the thing you do when you're like, yeah, I'm going off the grid. <laughs> like we're getting cows. I'm going to get some chickens. I'm going to own my own house. Like I love it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And then everybody's like, well, what are you going to do with the cows? Are you going to eat them or milk them? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm just going to love them. They're going to be my baby. <laughs> just more animals to love you know and then maybe like maybe like further on down the road like maybe um i'll be making enough money and i could like have like a little rescue sanctuary place at my house you know yeah. it might get out of control though but <laughs> it could be okay. fun that is a particularly different like pacific northwest version of out in the country with your animals because other people have cows and goats and things for very like utilitarian reasons. Yeah. And we're like, we want our cows and we want our goats and we just want to love them. <laughs> and we want to love them and we want to save like all of the goats and the cows and the chickens. Uh, I love it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, that's spectacular. Why don't we, um, in the interest of time, because I think we've got about 45 minutes left at this point. If you're comfortable, Mary, uh, would you be cool if we jump into talking about uh, anxiety? Let's do it. So tell me a little bit about what's up. Okay. Well, my anxiety started about about three and a half years ago. It just came out of nowhere and it, um, it stuck me and I got stuck in the house. Um, I could leave maybe once a week with help to like go grocery shopping and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, and it took the doctors a while to figure out it was anxiety. They stuck me on all these weird drugs and stuff. And then um, I started going to counseling um, once a week and I started taking a DBT class and um, a trauma class and a wellness class. Yeah. And I took those classes for about a year and I'm still going to counseling um, once a month. And uh, slowly I made progress and I was able to get out a little bit more, a little bit more, but um, the anxiety really stopped me from leaving the house. All the, all the physical symptoms. Um, I was nauseous all the time. I had mm -hmm. bad stomach pain, um, and of course, those would get worse um, when I leave the house. And I remember there were so many times when I'd have to have bags, like plastic bags, from the grocery store next to me because I would usually throw up when I was driving. Mm -hmm. Gross. But you know. Um, yeah, I was for, you know, a good six months. It was, I was, oh, maybe it was a year. I was really stuck in the house a lot. Like, yeah, it was, so, it was bad. So what's helped? Um, the DBT classes helped a lot. Um, and I met a great counselor that I clicked with. Um, 
And the thing that made the biggest um, improvements is when I started selling on eBay and I was able to take care of myself and it grew my confidence. And so in the last year, the progress has been like amazing. Of course, I still have anxiety attacks all the time, but looking back, I've made a lot of progress. Okay. So um, a couple questions. So first of all, I wanted to mention, like, I don't know what Adrienne told you about me, but I just wanted to be clear. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist and I don't play one on TV. Um, I am, I'm a, a hypnotherapist and I've been practicing hypnosis for over a decade now. And I spent about seven years teaching uh, lay people and professionals, psychologists and that type of people, how to use hypnosis, how to use language. Um, so I just wanted to make sure like you are not under any obligation to share anything that you aren't comfortable sharing. So I, if I ask a question and you don't feel like answering, you don't have to, I don't need to actually know uh, that much about your background or your past or any of that kind of stuff in order to be able to, uh, help you through this. Uh, and I wanted to ask, did anything happen about three and a half years ago? Did anything happen before that? Did something like um, significant in your life take place? Yes, it ha uh, the trauma happened about a year and a half to two years before the anxiety started. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But so I there, realized that that was the cause of it. Got it. Okay. So, and, and it had never happened prior to that. You'd never had any anxiety as a kid or anything like that? No. Okay. No. Okay. So there's an inciting incident and it's fairly clear to you what it is. That's good. That's easy. So then let me see another question. When does it happen? So like, especially now, like I don't really need to know then cause like I want to deal with where you're at right now um, and see if we can accelerate you either all the way down the path to completely done with it or at least a lot further down the path, a lot quicker than you would be otherwise. So I want to know where are you now? When does it happen? Uh, when doesn't it happen that it used to, that kind of thing? Um, it happens when um, I leave the house. Um, it doesn't happen every time I leave the house, though. Sorry, my dog's being I quiet. hear the dog. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> she's so annoying, but I love her. Um, it happens when I leave the house, and I noticed this yesterday. Um, it's when I, I need to stay busy when I'm out of the house. And I was shopping yesterday, and... Um, I looked through everything and I was waiting for them to bring new stuff out. And that's when the panic attack started. So I had to leave the store, go out to my car, make a YouTube video, calm myself down, like by talking to people and then went back in and uh, started listening to a YouTube video. So I think that's what I need to do now. Okay. I'm now. So, la so, so right now, if you're out of the house and you are idle, let's say like there's nothing happening there's nothing going on and at that point you, your mind starts to wander or like what what starts to happen um i start to get really hot that's the first sign and then um i start to get a little nauseous the muscles in my back tense up um and my chest tightens up okay Interesting. Okay. So there, so it, does it ever happen when you're, when you're in the house? Um, not to that extent. I usually have like pretty bad, like it's not as bad as it used to be, but like my first wake up, at, it's usually at like three or 4 AM and that's when it's bad, but yeah. it's nothing like when I'm out of the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That stuff really doesn't happen at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but there are, there's a little bit when you're at home. It's always there. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's always there. Okay. That's a good, that's a good distinction. So there's kind of a low level anxiety that's always there. Is it there now? Yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't mean, you know, you know, <laughs> I know, I know. yeah, <laughs> I don't mean good. I mean like good. good. <laughs> okay. So, um, does it ever not happen when you leave the house? Like, is it, is there ever a time that you can remember, let's say recently when you were out of the house and things got idle, you weren't being distracted, but you found that you weren't, uh, having, uh, feeling one come on. Um, being, I don't know. I don't think so, but don't it does so. not happen if I make a, 
it's when I make longer trips out of the house, like mm -hmm. at least three hours. Okay. And then it's bound to happen. But if I Good. just leave the house okay. for an hour, I'm fine. Interesting. So, okay. So right now I'm having about three different options come to mind of directions that we can go with this. And the way I look at it is any one of these could nip it in the bud. But I wanna start with a question, um, which is, uh, and, and I really want you to be honest with me on this. Are you open to the idea that your mind and your body is capable of letting this go, like right now while we're on this call? I, I don't know. It, that just seems too easy. Like it, that just seems too good to be true. Yeah. But that would be amazing. Like, yeah. if this only helps a little bit, I'll be happy. You sure. Know? Sure. My more of my concern is helping other people. In what if way? Oh, you mean like demonstrating for other people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The then, people. then here's what I'll tell you. Most important thing that you can do to help other people is be uh, honest with me. And what I mean by that is don't pretend that it's gone if it's not. Right. Does right. that make sense? Like, I yeah. really want you to be like, like, don't can, don't let me convince you. You can, you like, you are the one who gets to be the final arbiter of success here. Right. Okay. Right. So the next thing I want to talk about is testing. Okay. Cause I'm a stickler okay. for, I'm a stickler for testing. How are you going to know? If, if hypothetically that this were to be gone after our work here, how would you know? Um, I don't know if I would be able to tell right now, but I probably would be able to tell tomorrow when I'd wake up if, you know, like how I would feel at 3 a.m. when I wake up. Um, okay. That's a big sign. And uh, I think just being out in public, like going out for a while and kind of testing it out. Yeah, can we get, let's get specific with that and like think of a thing that you could do that you're like, right now, I know if I went and did that, it, it would start to come back. And, and if I was able to do that and remain like calm and feel okay, uh, you would absolutely know that it was gone. Can you think of a specific thing like going to the park or I don't know what it would be? Um, like a big thing would be staying the night somewhere. Oh, wow. I've okay. I've done that in, um about three years because I had yeah. a really bad can attack that I ended up in the ER from. Got it. So um, that would be a big thing. And I plan to do that this summer, actually. Oh, good. Good, good, yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've got, let's say that's what we're working towards. Okay. Okay. Well, so let's say in the middle here, what's a thing that you could do, you know, like tomorrow that would be, um, you'd be pretty sure that it would, in the past, it would have caused a, a panic attack. And if you go out and do it and it doesn't cause that, you're like, okay, I know something's happened. Um, well, I have a few appointments tomorrow. So if I was able to like go out and do something after the appointments, um, that would be a big thing. Like what so thing? Usually, um, it would just be a big thing. Like um, if I was able to um, go do something after my appointments, because my appointments are about two and a half hours long. Mm -hmm. And after that, I tend to just want to go home. Right. Uh, so I'm not, so I'm not, I'm not trying to be difficult. I mean, like, so your, uh, your two and a half hours of appointments are done. What thing would you go do? Probably go shopping for work. Okay. Like, go to the Goodwill. Okay. So d just the fact that you'd already been out for two and a half hours, if at that point you were like, yeah, I can go, I can still go shopping and I don't have to rush home. That's an indication that something's different. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. So now I want to, I want to cycle back to right now because I don't want to like wrap up and be like, well, let's wait till tomorrow to see if it helped. <laughs> so right, you, right. you mentioned that you have that kind of low level feeling all the time. Yes. Would you notice if it wasn't there? Yeah, I've noticed it before when it's gone away. Okay. And it's a pretty weird feeling. <laughs> I it's believe great, it. I believe no. It, it's when you weird. Get used to it. When you get used to it, it's like, oh, where is that thing? Even it, like people do that with pain. Like if you if somebody like finally does enough work on their their body where like a pain that they've had in their shoulder goes away, they're like, I feel weird. What's going on? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, then the first thing I would say is be be prepared um, for the weirdness, because sometimes the weirdness is something where people are like, this feels weird. It's not comfortable because it's not what I'm used to. So just like, you know, sometimes we go back to what's comfortable. Um, Let's see. Okay, another question that I want to ask is does your anxiety help you in any ways? Um, I can say that it's made me a lot stronger as a person. Okay. So there's that, but I don't think it helps me in any other way. You know? Okay. So let me give you an example. Um, some people who have phobias, like um, uh, an example is I've worked – with um, people who have a phobia of vomiting, which is actually a lot more common than most people think. Um, so when a lot of people who have a phobia of vomiting, for instance, the, their, uh, their unconscious mind is able to use the fear around throwing up as kind of like a universal eject button that whenever they are going and doing something that they have fear around or that they don't wanna do, If everything else that their unconscious mind has tried to get them to go in another direction doesn't work, it always knows that it can push the fear of vomiting button. And no matter what, the person is going to go, nope, never mind, I'm not going to go in that direction. So uh, one thought is, uh, is there a – and I'm not saying it's rational or it makes sense or it's the best way to do it. I'm more thinking like, is there uh, like even an immature part of you maybe that is like, I don't want to let this go because if I do, it's going to mean these other scary things that I don't want to have happen or I'm going to be unsafe without this anxiety. And the answer, you can say no. if like, no, I don't think so. That's fine too. I I just want to double check. Yeah, I honestly, I don't think so. Okay. Whenever I'm afraid of something now, I've noticed that I go deal with it. I just perfect. do it. Perfect. And I always do like, if I don't want to do something, I'm like, okay, that's what I need to do first. The thing I don't want to do because it's giving me anxiety, just do it and get it out of the way. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. So it sounds like you're actually in a place where you're like, no, 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 I'm ready to let this go. If it's possible, yep. I want to let go. Yep. Good. Yep. All right. Well, that was my next question. So you already answered it. Um, all right. Then let's talk about this. I said there were three ideas that came to mind, and I'm going to start with the first one. There are basically two ways that people do anxiety, psychologically and physiologically. The first one has to do with the mind more and how the mind can uh, play stories for us, like movies. The second one has to do with the body. So we're probably going to do both of these. But it's possible that we're going to do the first one and you're going to be like, well, that's it. It's possible. Okay. So the first one I want to do is the is one of my all-time favorite processes because it's so fast and so simple. The number one most uh, biggest challenge with this is just convincing people that it could possibly be that simple. Okay. So, uh, so let's put it this way. It is impossible – to be anxious about something you anticipate going awesome. So imagine this, somebody's like, I'm going to go on a date and I'm gonna go meet the parents. And they're anticipating it for like a week or weeks or something like that. If when they think about it, The only images, thoughts, pictures, whatever that pop into their mind are of it going fantastic. It's basically impossible to be anxious about it. So from a certain perspective, we can only be anxious about things that we are anticipating going badly. You with me so far? Yep. Yep. Okay. So good, good, good. So I don't know about you. But I don't know how to predict the future. (laughs) And I'm betting you don't either. I always predict a horrible future. Right. Well, here's my point. Exactly. Yeah. So the idea is 
we can create this, human beings are capable of creating this pattern where we anticipate the worst possible outcomes because in, in, a, in a helpful kind of way, the mind is actually trying to prevent that from happening. But it doesn't work that way. It's like if you've ever said, like, don't forget this person's name, don't forget this person's name, what are yep. you going to do? Forget it. Of course, exactly. Yep. So there's this almost magnetic pull that happens. Plus, I mean, that's not even to mention the fact that it just works us up into a frenzy. And the, the reality is, I, I love the phrase, have you ever heard, um, plan for the worst, expect the best? Yep. See, I don't like positive thinking. I don't believe in positive thinking. I think it's very damaging, actually, to like rose-colored glasses, everything in the world. I think you should think about, like contingency planning is smart. I think you should think about how things could go wrong, but to then dwell on it and get it like stuck in your future as like the thing you're, you can't stop thinking about. That's where we start to, it starts to spiral. You know what I mean? Like you probably yeah. do know exactly what I mean, but it's like that one little thought starts going like this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'll give you another example. You ever have a, you ever have migraines? No. Okay. Have you ever known anybody who had migraines? Yeah. Okay. So this is a bonus for anybody watching who's ever had migraines. So migraines are one of my favorite things to work with people on. Um, I used to do this in groups where I'd be like in front of an audience and I'd bring someone up from the, from the uh, crowd and say, let's talk about migraines. I've known people that have migraines that are so severe, like the pain, like they can't even open the curtains, like the light hurts their head and like they'll throw up from the pain and like nothing helps. So right. one of the things that I found, a couple interesting, uh, interesting tidbits and tips when it comes to migraines, and it, this, you'll kind of get how it connects to your, your situation or, or, or at what level, whatever level it does connect. So one of the first things that I'll do is I'm sitting there with someone on stage, they volunteered, they come up on stage and I'll say, so migraines, um, how bad are they on a scale from zero to 10? And they'll say, oh my God, they're an 11 always. And then I'll say, okay, yeah, so can you do it now? And they'll look at me like, what? And I'll be like, can you do it now? Can you do, can you do migraine right now? And they'll be like, no, what are, you, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, just think about it. Like when you are about to have migraine, what's the very first thing that happens? And they'll say, I don't know, like um, I'll feel like something like a pressure in my neck or in my head or behind my eyes or something like that. And then, and it's almost always at this point, it's almost always something they say to themselves where they'll yeah. say, oh no, here it comes yeah. Yeah. or something like that. And then what happens is that they tense up yeah. and the <laughs> tension is what then causes what could have potentially been, you know, we all get, little tiny twinges of pain in our head from time to time in our neck and in our head. But when you have the fear associated with that, that all of a sudden that might happen and then it might spiral into this, I'm, I'm out of commission for three days kind of thing. We literally start to have a panic attack about it. And the panic attack is actually what exacerbates it. And it builds and builds and builds. And builds. So, it's kind of like that, that part of our brain that wants to like anticipate what could possibly go wrong gets, it starts out with good intentions, but it goes a little bit nuts chasing its tail and then it, yep. you know, spirals out of control. Yes. So, yeah. so here's, you, you're with me so far, you're nodding like you're getting this. <laughs> uh, every day. Yep. All right. I get it. I get it. Yep. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so there's a process that is actually called the anxiety model and it relates it's based on the principle a couple of, of psychological concepts i want to explain first of all everybody has in their mind something that we call a timeline which is just basically a line that we use to organize our past and our future Okay. And it's sort of like if I ask you to remember something that happened yesterday 
And then I ask you to remember something that happened a week ago. And then I ask you to remember something that happened two and a half years ago. Those things are going to be like in a line with one of them further down the line than the one that just happened yesterday. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So now here's where things get crazy. We have our memories on the line into the past, but we actually have memories of the future on the line that goes out into the future. In other words, we have things that we anticipate happening. Okay. And they are, they are psychologically, they are the same thing as memories. Because memories are just like how we best remember something that we think happened. But have you ever remembered something that didn't really happen that way? Happens all the time. So yeah. in a sense, we're kind of creating our memories in the same way that we're creating the memories of our future. So yeah. there is a process that we can go through right now that is very quick, it's very simple, and it's one that I'm hoping that I'm gonna walk you through it probably a few times. And it's something that what I'd love is for you to like, if it works for you and if it's helpful, I want you to take it and use it as a practice because it's more of a thing that you'll actually train your brain into doing it. Okay. So I'm gonna do it with you once and then see how it goes, and then we'll see if we need to do it more times. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is I want you to think of an event in your future that you're anticipating happening in the near future, like tomorrow or few days in the next week or so, something like that, where okay. you are anticipating that you're gonna feel anxious. Like when you think about it now, maybe you can even feel anxiety. You got something? Okay, and then how far into the future? I don't need to know what it is, but how far is it? Uh, it's gonna be next Tuesday. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so there's a thing next Tuesday that you're anticipating and there's anxiety around it even when you think about it now. Yes. Excellent. So <laughs> then what I, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, uh, so here's the next part. I'm trying to think if we can skip this. Uh, let just to make it easy, we'll do this. So right now, um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna help you like become more aware of your timeline. Sometimes you can skip this step, but I want to make sure that anybody following along is gonna kind of get this. So even if for you you're like I this this makes sense to me, I want to do it for anybody watching. Okay. Right, right. So what I want you to do is in a moment, uh, I'm gonna have you uh, close your eyes and imagine floating above your timeline. Okay. And what I want you to do is as you think about a memory from your past, I want you to notice um, if I were to ask you to point in the direction of your past, notice if you would find yourself just naturally unconsciously pointing behind you or to one direction or in, in what direction would you point if I asked you where is your past? Okay. So which direction would you point? Go ahead and point. I, behind you? Behind me. Yeah. Perfect. And your future? In front of me. Out in front. Okay. Perfect. So that's very that's very simple. It's very n common uh, timeline. It's actually what we call um, in time, or sometimes called a standard timeline, uh, okay. which is pretty typical. Sometimes people have variations where the past is a curly Q spiral going up out of their head, <laughs> but that's pretty rare. Um, okay. So in a moment, we're going to do what's called a test run or a test flight over the timeline. And okay. uh, do you, do you uh, visualize pretty well? I think so. Okay, perfect. Sure. So yeah. the important thing to keep in mind with this is even if pictures are not uh, the, your, your, your primary mode, you can do this process uh, visually. You can imagine doing it visually, or you can, for some people, they kind of imagine floating like sounds floating on the wind or like a floating sensation, like floating in the bathtub. So when I say float, I don't mean to imply only visual. Okay, okay. So what I want you to do is go ahead and close your eyes okay. and imagine that you float up above your timeline. Now you can see your timeline in whatever way that you see it, or you might just feel or sense that it's down there. But just float up above your timeline and notice what's that's, what that's like. Okay. 
Okay, good. Now go ahead and see what it's like to float into the past. Now, do you want me to talk about what I'm seeing? Or nope. Just, okay. No, you Got can it. just notice it for yourself. Okay. Okay. Okay, go ahead and float back to now. So you're floating up above now. And, um, and then go f float out into your future a little bit. Notice what that's like. And then we'll do two more little experiments whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead and float back to now. And uh, when you're above now, what I want you to do is face the future and float higher up and farther back. Okay. Perfect. And then last thing, very least, or, or not, not the least, but uh, the very last, <laughs> is this is what we call the eject button. Um, float up higher. Float up higher and higher. Float up so high until your entire timeline seems like it's only one inch long. Notice how that feels. Perfect. <laughs> He just wants to get in on the, on, in, on the process. Right. <laughs> All right. And so whenever you're ready, go ahead and float back down to now. Float back down into now and come on back in the room. That was kind of crazy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You want to share any thoughts or experiences that you have? Um, well, when I look at the future, um, I just... I just see good, like, it's just beautiful. Like, I'm gonna get better and it's just, it's beautiful. And that's the way I usually look at the future. And it was nice to go up and like go so far up and just all this anxiety, it's just so tiny. Like, mm. just itty bitty, like, just a tiny part of my life. Like, like I mean, a, right now yeah. it feels like it's my whole life. But, but it gives you this perspective on it. Yeah. Absolutely. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, I'll tell you this, that wasn't the process, but that was the <laughs> hardest part of the process. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So you did perfect. That was great. The next part of this is going to be even easier. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do now is um, very similar. But what I'm going to have you do is go ahead and close your eyes okay. and float up above your timeline and float out into the future, but only a little ways. Float out until you are floating right above that event happening next Tuesday, the one you uh, said that you, were, that you could feel anxiety around. Notice while you're floating above it, if you can notice the feelings of anxiety that are down there in the event. Yeah, and notice if you can yeah. feel the where those show up in your body too. Yeah, it's um, mostly in my chest. Yep, yep. It's weird. it's weird, yep. Well, this is super good awareness practice. So even that is, is a really, really good step. So now here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine that you can drop something down into that event. Like imagine it's like a gold coin or like a glowing gem or like a drop of light or something that drops down into the event and it, it changes the event like a drop in water that ripples out and it rewrites the event. It rewrites to be exactly the way that you could best anticipate it going. And what I want you to do now is float out to 15 minutes past that event having completed. So whatever it is, you know what it is, float out to the point, where, like, really think about where are you going to be 15 minutes after it's over and imagine you're looking back on it and it went awesome. And notice now, where's the anxiety? Is it there or is it gone? Gone. Fantastic. Now, before you come back, before you come back, the most important thing is I want you to notice while you're floating there up above the timeline, 
Um, well, one thing I want you to, to see is, are there any lessons here? Just to ask your, like, like, just notice, ask your unconscious mind, are there, is there any lesson that you, you're supposed to learn that will help you make sure that this event does go that well? Is there a reason why she was feeling anxious? Was she giving you that message because there was a thing you needed to make sure that you were doing? Sometimes there is. And if you do it, then there's no reason to have that anxiety. If you get the lesson, if you learned what you need to learn, sometimes it's just habit. Sometimes there really isn't a lesson. Sometimes you already know everything you need to know. And that anxiety is just an old habit. So as that lesson, just allowing that to incorporate into your unconscious, you don't have to do anything. Your unconscious knows how to learn. That's what it does best. What I want you to do is notice that that event having changed to be in your future as going perfectly. Notice the ripple effects into your past from that moment in your future next Tuesday. It, the ripple effects change all of the events between now and then to support that event going perfectly. And you might not even be able to think of all the little different ways that your unconscious goes, oh, that's what you want? <laughs> you want it to go great? Oh, well, if, it, if it's going to go great, then we're going to need to do this, and we're going to need to make sure this happens. And all of the things change to support that outcome. And now here's where it gets really neat. Watch what happens when the ripples go out into your future from that point. And notice how that feels in your body. Beautiful. That's amazing. Wonderful. Now go ahead and take a deep breath. <sighs> let it out and relax and notice what you can let go of with that breath. Take another breath, breathe in. Notice what you were holding on to and how you can let that go. Oh, that's awesome. Boy, having the camera here is so helpful. Like I can see when it shifts in your shoulders. I can see when it wow. shifts in, in your cheeks, in the tension in your jaw. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So now what I want you to do is go ahead and float back to now. Float all the way back to now. Come back down into the room. Come right back Ooh. down into now. That was crazy. That was a wow. big one, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't think I was going to cry hey, or anything. I'll, like, I'll be honest. I didn't, from? I didn't know how that was going to go. Some people take to it like a fish to water like you did. Some people are like, eh. And then I usually go on to technique number two, but wow. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So I got to yeah. say, I got to say, before we break that down, I'm, I'm being totally sincere. Thank you. Thank you for coming on here. Thank you for being so vulnerable. You don't know me from anybody. And you just opened up in a way I'm honored. I really oh. am. It, 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 it matters to me a lot that you would be willing to do that. I mean, thanks, Adrian, for being kick-ass and knowing kick-ass people. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, and, I'm and, so and thank, happy to be here. Thank you. So, yeah, and thank okay, you. so t t can you, I'm going to shut up now. Tell me what just happened. <laughs> um, it was, I was picturing myself driving home from having lunch with my friend, um, driving on the highway and, uh, normal like normal <laughs> and I never feel normal and it was it was like the best feeling in the world like, oh my god when you yeah. said the word normal I was like normal is like heaven for you yeah 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 just to have all that tension and just yeah it's just all the tightness just have it disappear. It's just, it's such a foreign feeling. Like I never feel that anymore. Yeah. So, 
even if it was just for that brief moment, it was, ah, ah I can breathe a little better now. Like, yeah, it's nice. I like that. Well, let me, let me throw out a couple thoughts here for you. Okay. Okay. So this process is basic. It, it's based on the idea that we want to have good things in our future that, you know, since you can't predict the future, the anxiety is a signal. Anxiety serves all emotions serve a purpose. There's no such thing as a negative emotion. And as a matter of fact, when we label an emotion as negative, by, by definition, there's a judgment on that emotion. Like we're judging it as bad or wrong. And what that does is it causes us to resist it. And then it gets stuck and it never finishes doing what it was supposed to do. All emotions serve a purpose and anxiety is supposed to be like a little bring, like a little red flag that goes, hey, notice that thing, like, like anticipation. Like, so I love this phrase. Um, uh, I'm not sure who originated this. I think it was Tad, Tad James originally said, anxiety is a warning from the unconscious mind to focus on what you want as opposed to what you don't want. Okay. So when we feel anxiety, we go, oh, I must be thinking about something going shitty. Right? Yep. Yep. And if we go, okay, well, what if it didn't go shitty? What if it would? See, the thing for most people is they never even, I, I, give you, I gave the example of dinner with the parents. I literally remember having this conversation with a client years ago who was talking about how she was dreading going home from school to go have pa dinner with her parents. And she's like, because they constantly grill me about stuff. And I asked her, how would you like dinner with your parents to go? And she went, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. <laughs> and I was like, no, yeah. like, if you imagine the perfect dinner with your parents, what would that be like? And she flat out said, I've never thought about it. The one of the main reasons why people have so much negativity in their future is they never stop and think about how they'd actually like it to go. Right. So even just the act of thinking about that lunch and going, what does totally successful look like? What, how would do I want that lunch to go? And and you and the cool thing, the trick is when you fast forward to the end to 15 minutes past the successful completion of the event, 15 minutes past it going awesome, and then you turn around and look backwards, your unconscious goes, oh, it, it, it clears it up as like, that's the end destination. That's the goal that we're shooting for. That's the bullseye. And it's, it's, it's very much just like saying, hey, this is what we wanna have happen. And then your amazingly powerful unconscious mind can go, oh, I can make that happen. I can do that. So I did this. Uh, I, I remember <laughs> I, I used to teach this in classes to people. And I remember my teacher once shared a story about doing this with individuals in a group. Or so we do this with a whole group of people. And then we ask, is there anybody here who still is feeling anxious about something? And somebody raised their hand and they said, okay, good. Let's do it again. And so she fast forwarded to another event she was feeling anxious about and she did it and she fast forwarded and she was like, I'm still feeling the anxiety. And she did it again. She did it again. They did it about eight times. Okay. And then finally she's sitting there with her eyes closed and she goes, Oh, I'm only supposed to have good things in my future. <laughs> oh, okay. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the basic idea you can do it on anything that you're feeling anxious about and at first because this has been a pattern that's been with you for so long you may find that you need to do it somewhat frequently maybe not i mean maybe you're that was pretty profound what just happened maybe your unconscious takes it and goes hey we're just going to do that from now on but if you ever find yourself in a situation where you are feeling anxious about something, you can run that same pattern. All you do is close your eyes, float up above your timeline, go out to 15 minutes past the event going fantastic, 
and then turn around and face the past and then notice where the anxiety goes. Yeah. And that's it. And then you can ask about learnings and you can see if anything comes to mind. But what happens is if you keep practicing this, for most people, they find that at some point they retrain their brain. It's like, have you ever heard the, the, the thing where you like every day before bed, you write down three things you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. And then over time, you actually start to change your brain and you start to filter for things you're grateful for. This works exactly the same way. The, the difference is I suggest you use it when you're feeling anxious. And then yep. fast forward to the point where it goes awesome. Notice, okay, I'm feeling anxiety. What am I, what am I doing in my head? I do this with guys that are like nervous to go talk to girls. And they, uh, whenever you talk to them about the pictures that they're playing in their head when they're nervous, it's always like I walk up to her and she like throws a drink in my face. <laughs> Right, right. Or like, like, that's why, of course you're nervous. Of right. course you're nervous. Imagine that you go over there and you two hit it off. It, does that mean that's actually going to happen? No, but it means you're going to have a much better chance of it happening. Because right. if you're anticipating she's going to slap you, of course you're going to go over there like all tense and nervous and you're not going to make a good impression. Right, right. So, um, <laughs> wow, yeah, awesome. So can yeah. I can I ask can I ask another question before we kind of finish up here? Yeah, yeah. That low level anxiety that you were feeling before. How's that feeling now? Um I don't notice it right now. I mean that could be because I'm talking to you because when I talk to somebody it usually goes away too. But I have this like tired feeling, like exhausted feeling in my body like after a panic attack. Ah, that makes sense. Kind of like a, ugh, like it's over. So I kind of feel like I feel better, but I'm not sure. But well, I I, I, like it. I don't need you to like pretend anything. And I'm really appreciative of you right. uh, like being honest with me. And um, I want to throw out one random intuition that just popped into my head. Okay. I want you to consider the idea that that feeling of exhaustion. What if that's what relaxed feels like? Oh, that could be because like on my days that I, I can relax, I can't like, I, like I make a plan. This is my day to relax, but it's, it's so hard for me to just lay down and relax. Anxiety is another word for tension. And when tension goes away, what are you left with? Relaxation. Yep. The crazy thing about relaxation is that it's not a thing that you can do. It's actually a thing you're not doing. Does that yep. make sense? Like you yeah. can squeeze your fist or you can not squeeze your fist. That's what being relaxed is, is not doing something. So when you said, I, I feel like exhausted, first of all, that could just very well be because you've been holding on to so much tension and you just let it go. And yeah. all of a sudden you're like, I think I need a nap. <laughs> and yeah, I, I also, exactly. yeah. I also want to throw out the idea that, you know, if, if that feeling is similar to how you feel after a panic attack, one of the things that happens when you have that panic attack is your body kind of gets all of it out. And then you're left with this exhausted slash relaxed feeling. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, what, what we're talking about doing right now is um, finding an easier, healthier way for you to get too relaxed than have the panic attack, you know? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely going to use that skill. I'm going to put that in my tool bag. I'm really excited. Okay. Well, then, how, how about this? I want to throw something out. If you – I want you to update me, okay? Um, okay. Tell me how this is going. Uh, like okay. tomorrow and definitely next Tuesday. That's the one that I'm really excited to, to anticipate. Yeah. Like yeah. I want to hear from you when you're driving home or like if you, if you like making videos, oh my God, I would love it if you would just like pop on the camera after your lunch and be yeah. honest. Tell me like, are you good? Are you not good? Are you better but not totally better? I want to know. Okay. And then here's okay. the deal. If you're not done, let's do part two. 
Okay. Are you cool with that? I'm, yeah, I'm definitely cool with that. I like it. I like it because there are there are other things we can do, and the fact that that helped as much as I think it maybe did or it seemed to. Yeah. That yeah, just makes yeah. me go, well, then we've got tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I okay. love tools. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like you've helped me a lot. Like I'm I'm really, really happy. I'm really happy yeah. that I had the chance to do this. How are you feeling, Adrienne? I am. It's just such a blessing to get to see you both do that together. I, of course, have a different perspective of what, of what was going on. I'm just really honored and touched that you said yes to this, Mary. I, I'm oh. glad I followed my intuition to reach out. Yes, thank you for reaching out. I can't thank you enough. Like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. And I don't know. Uh, we've got an awesome from one of our, our people, Corley, who who is also uh, trained in some of this stuff. She, she said awesome. Uh, oh. We had Nick earlier saying, oh, my gosh, this is so interesting. So oh, I... Cool. Yeah, I I just I just think it's a, a delight that uh, that we get to share. These I'm just things. excited we got a chance to do this live. Like I've never I've never done this. Like I I know that there's got to be people out there that have, but I've never seen anybody do this before. And I'm like I hope I inspire a bunch of other NLP and hypnosis people out there to be like, come on, like let's show the world what what you can do with your mind and how easy it can be to deal with something that has been, you know, debilitating for years for Mary. And like, I I'm not saying it's hundred percent gone, let's find out, but like, you know, something happened and that's what's exciting to me. Like, I'm just so happy with how that went. Yeah, me too, me too. Cause you don't notice that much progress. Like when I've been working on my anxiety, I've never noticed progress like that. You know, right. you gotta look back like, six months and yeah and be like I think progress. it's different now <laughs> but yeah I, I feel totally different it's it's really weird you it's look weird. different you you look <laughs> different you do right Adrienne <laughs> like yeah like pretty... you're I, I don't know if you're just more comfortable or whatever but your smile's bigger like you're you're stand you're sitting a little bit differently like your breathing shifted it's big yeah I feel like this was huge like huge Coralie yeah, says you to look tell lighter my counselor too. too. <laughs> Coralie says you look lighter too. <laughs> She's one of the people watching. Yay! <laughs> and thanks for having your dog on too. <laughs> yeah, at least she, she wasn't too bad today. So. No, she was very well behaved, especially while we were doing the process. I think she could tell something important was going on. Yeah, because she's really good with my anxiety. Like she'll drop if I start crying, she will drop her food out of her mouth and run to me and. Start oh. licking my face until I stop crying. So, oh, it's so yeah. good you've got her. That's really good. Yeah. 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 It's been great. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, well, Adrienne, what else do we? What else are we doing? I feel like we are like end this thing on a high note, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, do we want to talk about? So, we're gonna hear from Mary. Yeah. Uh, and she's gonna check in about next Tuesday. Yeah. So, uh, if we'll do a part two, we'll let people know. Yeah. And essentially, with our, we set out to, to experiment about like NLP. These tools are awesome. Mm -hmm. How can we continue the conversation after our trainings when we got these tools? Uh, so we wanted to reach out and, and talk about these processes with people. And we wanted to do a live demo and we got to do a live demo because we don't know, I, I, are, is anybody else doing video live demo live conferencing i have no idea if they are we do yeah them. like i said i gotta i gotta assume that if you search youtube you can find stuff like this but it's none of it's like big i mean i'm not saying this is going to be but like it's just not widely it's there's not that much out there i mean people put video they'll video yeah and then they'll edit it and put it out i've seen those yeah. absolutely and has anybody just jumped on with a stranger live just like hey. i don't know What's I like, I like the, if it is the first time or if it is one of the only times and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we're the first to do live demo with the dog. I'm pretty sure about that too. Yes. <laughs> so what we were thinking of doing is just try this out in the world, see oh. the response from people and then go and find ways of, of redoing this format 
to, to bring it out uh, in public. Did you want to talk about your ideas of, of that? Yeah, you know what I'm going to do just mm -hmm. so that Mary doesn't have to worry about being on camera anymore. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to demote you, but don't take it personally. Oh. I'm just going <laughs> to I'm going to send you back into uh, into the audience. So I'm going to change role okay. to viewer. And so you should disappear. And then I think you'll pop right back up. Um, and then you'll be able to see. Thank you again so much, Mary. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank Couldn't you have done this without you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Okay. Thanks. Bye, Mary. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, so you were saying, like, you want to talk about the other projects? Yeah, so I want to talk about, like, here's, we've wrapped up our six we said we were going to do. And this is an amazing way to, to wrap up this, this experiment. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> So yeah, do you want to talk about like where where you see this going? Or well, okay. So you and I are gonna do a, another podcast, and and like here here's here's the the raw honest truth. I love hypnosis and NLP. I love this stuff. I I I will I will be talking about this stuff probably for the rest of my life because it's just it's awesome. And there's nothing I like talking about more than other people's unconscious minds. That's the thing I am most in love with in the world. <laughs> so uh, Adrienne, as much as she likes NLP and hypnosis, is not like live, eat, breathe, sleep, drink. Uh, NLP and hypnosis. So, and to be clear, the difference is I love these things. I love these tools. I utilize these tools. I love the results. Ah, yes. I love the results and what people do with their lives, who they are when stuff's stuck, helping them get it unstuck so that we can be part of just amazing stories. Yeah. That's what really gets me jazzed up. So NLP is very much a means to an end for you. And, and you know, to a certain extent it is for me too. I just, I like geeking out on it and it's really fun. So here's what I'm planning on doing. I want to bring this podcast back. Probably we'll go by a different name, but it'll be something like <laughs> a podcast where me and somebody else field questions for people and give people an opportunity to volunteer come on like what mary just did and for us to just demonstrate this and um and talk about it and answer people's questions and give people a resource and, a, and an avenue to that i want to find the perfect person to partner on that with me i want somebody who knows nlp and hypnosis inside and out somebody who's got a ton of experience and somebody who geeks out on this stuff the way I do. I want two people sitting here talking about NLP that are just in love with this stuff. And Adrienne and I have found that we love our chemistry. We love uh, the way that we do this together. And our plan is to go start a different podcast. And I'll be honest with you, the podcast I'm doing with her is the one that I think this is going to be the place where I'm going to share my my real legacy. Like this is the place where I want to talk about the deepest stuff, the stuff I'm, the stuff I'm doing in my own life, the stuff I'm researching. And, and it's, it's going to be, should I tell them what it's called? I think you can. You think, I mean, we, this is the first yeah. time we're going to talk about this. So this is, we're both squishing together some loves and desires that we've had for how we want to share ourselves with the world and how we want to make an impact in the world. Yeah. And some some of it comes from my, I guess we both have an obsession with the kind of superhero trope. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love figuring out how to to make the most out of our own lives and, and be epic heroes in our own lives and in, in the lives of others. I feel like I sometimes forget how weird I am. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I forget that, you know, not <laughs> not everybody was homeschooled and grew up on a Christmas tree farm in the middle of nowhere uh, and was involved in several religious cults at various times. And like, I, I, my uncle gave me a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, when I was like 17 years old. And it said, if you want to become wealthy, uh, don't go to school uh, and don't get a job, start a business. And I literally quit school and quit my job to go and was like, okay. <laughs> and I have been this weirdo entrepreneur ever since for the most part, the longest time I ever held a job was when I was teaching NLP for the empowerment partnership, which is four years. That's the longest I've ever held any job in my life. 
Um, and it was, mo it was because it was such amazing learning opportunity for me to get to learn from Dr. Matt and to teach all these people is amazing. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And um, for me, I have always been on what I consider to be a hero's journey, like Joseph Campbell style. I've always been on this epic quest to like go on an adventure and do something with my life. And I, I forget sometimes that not everybody – has this like overriding thing that like no matter what well obviously I'm on an adventure like obviously I'm gonna do that that to me is just this like given that I kind of um live my life with and Adrian is the same way and I think that there's a lot of you other people out there that have that feeling inside that have that call to adventure and um we are <laughs> we are Adrienne's telling me not to tell you the title now. <laughs> You're so evil. So, <laughs> all right, fine. Fine. We're going to we're going to reveal the title in a little bit. Um but it it is about um it's about that adventure. It's about being a leader in your own life and it's about finding your epic quest. And basically the podcast is going to be us telling you about all of the best tools that we've found, that we've found for ourselves and that we've discovered from other people, bringing in interviews and sharing with you the resources to help you be the hero you're supposed to be, to go on your epic quest. So uh, we will be announcing that soon. Yes. And that to me is like the wide thing that I'm doing. That's gonna be the most broad thing. And that's me and Adrienne. It's a much smaller niche for me to do this podcast, the one that we're doing here of like for the like 0.01% of people who even know what NLP is. Maybe that's generous, probably 0001 or something. Um, so eventually I want to bring this podcast back when I find the right person to partner with me on it. And um, if you know anybody or if you're watching this and you think you might be the, first, the perfect person, uh, shoot me an email. Um, Nicholas at NicholasRave.com, um, and I'd be happy to to chat with you about it. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan. I will be bringing this one back, but this one's kind of uh, it's ne it's it's serving a much smaller audience. Um, the other one is going to be like for anybody who likes this stuff, um, buckle up because we're going to be talking <laughs> about everything and anything. We're going to talk about exercise and diet and sleep and sex and money and uh and influence and joseph campbell we're going to talk about purpose how you find your purpose we're going to talk about relationships we're going to talk about you go on another give, give them more <laughs> what else we're are we going to talk about probably ch chocolate we might bring up chocolate and sex some more a yes times probably going to talk about sex probably going to talk about sex a couple yeah. yep uh what else <laughs> is in there <laughs> Well, you, we're going to bring interview uh, subjects on. That's a big thing that we want to do. We want to find people who are on an epic quest and bring them on and interview them about what they do. Here's the big thing. The big thing is to also focus on the little things. And so Ooh. when we're looking at, at, at finding people who are living their life's uh, journey, heroic journey there, knowing that that there are small things you can do and that – even taking the time to get out of bed <laughs> in the morning on days when that seems almost impossible, that that is part of living a, a journey that is an, an adventure, that there, there are absolutely people that you've never heard of because they haven't written a book and they have fascinating things to say about how to live a life that's... that's I worked... Before I quit my job, the job I was working when I read that book and I quit, I was working at a coffee shop in Olympia, Washington, and uh, it was in a mall. Uh, it's called Olives East. And one time I was there in the middle of the afternoon. Nobody else was there. I'm behind the counter. And um, this woman uh, comes into the uh, restaurant because it had like a cafe as well as the coffee shop. And I was like the barista behind the counter and she was pushing a wheelchair with this older woman in the wheelchair. And um, when they, when she came over, they, they sat over at a table and she came over to order and she said, um, she started ordering the food and she said, you know, um, that woman over there, that's my mother. And she said, um, 
she comes here every year for her birthday. It's her birthday today. She's 102. <laughs> and I went, I need to go on break <laughs> because when do you have that opportunity? So I went over and I said, uh, like, I think I found some kind of dessert and I brought it over and I said, happy birthday. And I sat down and I said, can I sit and can I talk to you? And this woman told me about how she and her family was fairly well off. And they were one of the first people in Seattle to have a horseless carriage. She used the words horseless carriage. <laughs> and I'm like, and she was sharp as a fucking tack. This woman was like, you know, she was she was in a wheelchair, but she was there. You know what I mean? And I was talking to her about the roaring 20s. She was in her 20s in the roaring 20s. And she <laughs> like flappers and like, oh my God, it was unbelievable. It was one of the highlights of my life to just sit there and be like, tell me about life. If you could have a podcast where you could talk to people like that, would you want to hear those conversations? That's kind of what we're talking about. I have a similar, shorter example. <laughs> I was working at a Best Buy in Bellingham, Washington. It was practically the border of Canada. So I, I do speak fluent Canadian <laughs> hey. from that experience. And so there was this woman who was like looking at accessories on the thing. And I noticed she had a beautiful necklace of like a sea turtle. I was like, oh, that's a great necklace. And she spun around kind of in like epic slow-mo. And she's like, if you ever have the opportunity <laughs> to experience a sea turtle in person, it will change your life. Yes. And I believe her. And what, what, I mean, everyone has some kind of story like yes. that. And that's the kind of stuff I want to uncover. Everyone what did you has... say? Focus, like the big thing is the little thing, right? Yes. Yeah. This is what, these are the kinds of themes. So and I don't think that we have sold this in a way that makes any sense to anyone listening at all. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> but we're going to do it. Yes, <laughs> we're going to have a blast doing it. Because this is a sort of thing. Here's the, here's the truth about business and in life. If there's anything that you would do that brings you great joy, and it wouldn't matter when, whether anyone else thought it was brilliant or worth doing, that's the thing you should do. Yeah, there's yeah. Like we would talk about ridiculously amazing things about life whether anybody listened or not. Yeah, you you said it when you said like the thing that we're doing here is uh, talking about how to go and live the life uh, that you would live if you had a near death experience and you woke up and were like, oh my God, I now see what's important and what doesn't matter. Uh, like, you know, what's the thing that you would do if you had all money in the world? Like uh, Alan Watts, he used to say this. He, was, he said when he talked to college kids and they'd come up and say, how do I find what I'm supposed to do with my life? And he said, okay, well, let's just start as a thought experiment. Like, um, what, like what, do you, what would you do if you didn't have to worry about money? And he said, and they, they always have an answer and they always have a thing. And he's like, okay, that's what you should do. <laughs> that's what you should do. Now, the challenge is to figure out how to not worry about money. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be because you figure out a way to turn that thing into a business, or it might not be. You might find a way to make money some other way. But the point is, what's the thing you would do if you didn't have to worry about money? That's the thing you should be doing. Yeah. That's your epic quest. Because if you're doing that, money's going to come a lot easier. All right, I think we're done. <laughs> okay. We did that. Thanks for joining us for this uh fun experience of of how to nlp standing up yeah we've been live on facebook for like an hour and a half or close so awesome i hope uh i hope people have dropped in i hope you've enjoyed this i love you all uh and to all a good night thanks very much